Okay, in the last video, I promised to show you how to, to make another uh, device to get clean borders on your gel prints. Um, and also, I told you you could use this with a, putting it, something underneath it to follow the lines. Like, I mean, you can get them out of a, get something out of a coloring book or what, or do your own drawing. I did a drawing here that we're going to use to show you how to do that. Now, I, I traced the gel, the gel plate, and then I drew just a little simple vase and flowers in the middle. And my plate is dirty, but I like the grunge, so I'm going to keep that on there. Okay, so this is the device, and after this, after I show you my, sh show how you use it, I'll show you how to make one of these. It's very simple. This one's made out of a, a Nakote cracker box. My husband loves these things. Now... This one is one and an eighth, this, these strips. So that's going to give you, if you cut your paper right, a one and an eighth border. Now, this is a five by seven plate. So I've cut two sheets of paper, seven and two eighths and nine and two eighths. And it should give me a nice even border all around. My gel plate's a little bit warped from use. It's very old, but okay. As you can see, there's my border. We'll start with... Maybe some background color. A little yellow down here. And white up there. Now while you're inking up your plate, you put this to the side. You don't, don't want to get ink on. I've already got ink on my fingers. I mean ink. I used to be a printer. That's why. You don't want to get paint on your fingers when you're doing this. So I'm going to do the top in white, kind of vaguely where it would be on the table, divide it up, and bring this down to here. Just give it just a little, little division. It's not, and I could get a clean line if I put a piece of paper down there, but I don't care about a clean line for this. I think it's, now you take this. Push it into the corner. Make sure you've got it tight there. Take your paper. Now you can see how my gel plate is. I don't know if you can see it's slightly warped. So I'll never get a perfect one with this gel plate. I need to buy another one. All right, you take your paper and you put it in the corner. Up against the side. I put my finger on it Make when I make sure I've got it all the way to the top. Yeah, that's good. Now I can pull that away once the paper's stuck. This this gel plate really does need replacing. I'm really. Well, there's my background. Now I'm going to take a tissue, a dry tissue, and clean off. I'm not going to go crazy on it. I like a little grunge. But I'm going to clean it off so I can see where I need to put the vase and the flowers in. Okay. I'm going to wait a minute to see if my phone reconnects with my screen so I can see what I'm doing, but it does look like I'm still recording, so. Um, now I'm going to paint in the vase, which I'll do in this blue. And if I wanted to do this more precise, I'd like be standing over it. But I just want a nice little vase here. Try not to get too fussy. But, oh, 
right. And I'm going to take some black, well, maybe some dark green. Do I have a dark green? Uh, green. Pardon my reach. I'm putting some stems. Just small. And then I'll probably print this part of it. Well, that's not a very skinny stem, but who knows the way it will come out. Okay, I think that's... And I can put this leaf in. And maybe this leaf. And maybe another little leaf over here that's not in the picture. That way it looks like a full vase. Okay. Now I'm going to print that over my background, hoping it comes out. Bring your little device back. Make sure you use it. Doing... Oh, and the other thing is, it's a good idea to put like a T on the page. Um, that way, you know you're doing it the right way. Because I have put, I have got one half done with like five layers, and then put it in the wrong way. And that's a pain. That is a pain. Ruin all the work you did. I am going to have to go over that face a little bit, but that's okay. And some of the grunge is being picked up, as you can see. So we're going to have to do the vase again. Darker, more paint. The nice thing is it's still there, so I can see exactly where I need to do it, even without the lines underneath. You can do this freehand without the lines if you like. And I could like put texture over this at this point or, you know, you can do anything. That's the nice thing about art. You can do whatever you want. Okay, it doesn't always come out great, but... Now, what I want to do is while well, I got this done, I'll take some red or orange. I think this is more orange than red, but they say it's red, so I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to do some flower petals. These are probably going to come in late and I'll have to overdo them, but it's okay. Now, from up where you're standing, you can see the picture better than I can. Usually when I do this, I stand up. Because you want to get the straight down view like you're getting. But, that's... I got what I got when I when I videotape. I have to sit down. I get too tired. Mm. I figure this a sketch is always just a suggestion to me. I don't really think I have to. Well, I love the way this is making lines on the outer edge. Hoping that comes out on the when I print it. All right, now, I should have taken this away, honestly. And of course, I got paint. Now, if you do this right, the back will be nice and clean. I'm just in a show you mood. So, it's not precise. 
No. I like it though. I'm going to pick this. And I'm going to do a different red on those flowers. interest to them. Now this is nice to do. You could do the whole thing, but you got to keep in mind what's going to be on the top will be on the bottom, but you could do the whole painting and then just pull it, let it dry and pull it up with another color. But you're just following whatever's underneath. You can get, you can do sketches of your own, like this one was just an offhand sketch. Or you can go get color books, or there's lots of things you can do. I know some people say, I can't draw, I can't draw. I used to teach people to draw. And it isn't that you can't draw, because if you can write your name, and you can write in cursive, you got it. Because it's just a matter, but what you can't do is usually you can't see what you're seeing. I mean, I, that sounds strange, but... You have to learn how to interpret what you're seeing. That's that's how, what you learn when you draw. And yeah, there are some people that are talented and can right off the bat draw. But I have taught people. My I taught my mother when I went to visit her one time. She was complaining that she couldn't even do stick figures. And I told her that you're wrong. And I set up a little still life on the kitchen table. And by the end of the afternoon, which we had a wonderful afternoon visiting, by the end of the afternoon, she did a drawing she was very, very proud of. She thought she couldn't do it because she'd never been taught how to do it. We're taught how to write, and they have you draw when you're in school, but they never teach you how to draw. They don't teach you that you, you should look for the shape of things. That's why when you have these signals in your head, what a face looks like, that's why kids when they draw so many of their drawings look like another it's just this is my symbol for a, for a house this is what a house looks like and that's what they draw I'm going to mix some purple and red a little bit get a color for the middle of my other flowers which I don't think is going to work very well but we'll see it's not wanting to work but they're asking it to work. And basically, it's just play. As an adult, it's fun to get to play again. Now. Now we're going to put this on. For one last time. Press it down good. I may. Oh, I kind of like what I got. I think I might just leave it. This is just a demo. And as you can see, just following the picture underneath. Now I'm I'm pretty messy today. I don't know. I'm in one of those sloppy days. So, but you can see what you can do with this. I could go in with a really fine brush and accent the leaves, make the stems look more like stems. You can do a lot of things with it, but you can. this is how you can make a picture from something. Because, you know, I love gel printing, but so much of it is abstract, and every once in a while I like to make something that's something. So, and actually, if I was sitting down to do this and actually trying to do, I would be doing a lot more layers, a lot more careful, and I would be standing up so I could see what I was doing. But let's try and pull this up with some white or some, yeah, let's use the heavy body white and see what we get. <sighs> one last pull. 
because I have one more sheet of paper. Now this is kind of wet, so I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and just dry it off a little bit. Now, so let's see what we get. And it is still kind of wet. Well, that might not come up, might come up. Who knows? Like I said, I have one more sheet of paper this size, so I might as well try. Ooh, that purple didn't do well. I guess that was still something wet. All right, let's see. If we can get anything. Put your all the way to the middle. Yeah, this jelly plate is warped. I can feel when I rub it with my hand, I can feel that it's got a dip there. I really do need to just take the bite and either make myself a 5 by 7 I make my own jelly plate. And they're just as good as these. No, it is not going to pull a darn thing up. Not on your life. Let's try one more time. Let's try it with the back of the drawing. Which would be interesting if it did it. Oh, that is cool. Look at that. I like that. I can go over that with a pen and be much nicer. And that's also, too, what you can do. You can go over and over these. But that's how to use this one. Now I'm going to show you how to make one of these. It's very simple. I'm going to put my plate to one side. We'll come back to that. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a box. You want a sturdy box. This this one is just, I mean, it's not as sturdy, so it I don't get as good a precise. And I actually, this was supposed to be one inch, but I wasn't paying attention. I cut them both one and one eighth. So let me show you how to do it. I've got this box, and everybody can get this box because this is the contact delivery, contactless delivery. They put your pizza, sit it down and put your pizza on it and ring your doorbell. Um, so any box, you want it sturdier than this one though, this, this, this works, but you want it sturdier than that if you're going to use it over and over again. And hopefully you will if you're going to go through the effort of making it. Now, I, I pick a corner that I'm going to use and I reinforce it. I've got packing tape, you can use any tape. I reinforce it. So that it's not going to break while I'm putting the box together. Now that, that corner will stay nice. What we can do now is, if I seem distracted, my camera keeps wanting to go, to go off, but it's not. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut... Actually, I'm going to use my X-Acto knife. I'm going to pull this corner down. We're going to get rid of all this other garbage. Now, I usually would do this on my mat, but it's covered with paint right now. Just be careful when you're cutting. Scissors is probably a better bet, but I just want to get this done quickly. I don't have to tell you, but cut away from yourself. Okay, now there's two ways you can do this. This is not very thick, so I could cut here so that I would have a little bit to set the plate on. Let's do it that way on this one. I need a ruler. Just gonna make a line here. Yeah, I'm cutting my ruler instead of the paper. Look at all that pink. I've destroyed more rulers in my lifetime. 
I just need it so it bends. Once it bends, it's much easier to cut. There we go. Like I said, cut away from yourself. Now you have a nice little corner thing. We're going to cut this end off here. Now, see you have the corner thing like this. The only difference is this has this part. And you can use it, you cannot use it. All right, I have cut this, hopefully, an inch and a half wide. Yep, inch and a half. This is the other end, inch and a half. Yep. Now we're going to use this to go across. Now you don't have to have it all the way down, so let's see how far. Uh, five inches will, yes, okay, we'll cut five inches off the end of this. Now here's the thing, these ends are cut, you've got to make sure the ends are cut correctly. They've got to be straight up from the, so we're going to go five inches in. We are going to make sure it's straight. Looks pretty good. Well, let's see if we can get it cut straight. I like to butt my ruler up against it because I know the end of my ruler is flat. the ruler again. I have better rulers than these, but now the, this side, since I didn't cut it as well as I cut the other ends, because I'm not using my best ruler, or now I'm going to mark these ends that were cut before. Now, what you can do with this, I, I, view, I started using double stick tape for this. It just works better for me. Now, there you go. That is perfect. Now you're going to get a little bit like this thing here. Press that in because you want this butt up against that edge. So I'm going to use double stick tape. You can use glue. You can use whatever you want. This just this just works for me. And I have one that I made like two years ago. I think it's got a two inch border, which I don't know where it is right now, but it, um, it's double stick tape and it's still lasting. So I guess this is the, a good way to do it. Sorry, my hands are off camera. Every time I put this camera up, I've got a different view. So I think I'm okay here because this is where I was working before. But now, no, it's up here. So, i got to figure out which one's which. Not that it matters much. It goes better this way, though. Okay. Now, I'm going to get this off of here. Now we're going to butt this up in this corner tight, tight, tight as we can before we push it down. Tight, tight, tight. You'll fight against that little, 
that little inner thing, but it's tight against there. Now you're going to do the same thing with this one. Make sure the X is on there because the, you know that that one has a better straight edge than, than the second one I cut. Yours, I hope, will have straight edges all the way so you don't have to worry. Butt it up against that one and push it up tight and then push it down. There. Now I'm going to cut the edge off here. Now, somebody that I showed how to do that, she um, took hers and um, put, I think she put gesso over it and then uh, varnish so that if she got paint on it, she could wipe it clean. I almost never get paint on them. I mean, I did on this one. I was kind of surprised I got a little on the edge. So I don't worry about that, but you can do that. Or you can spray that ceram coat on it or something so that you can wash it off later. Um, but this is how I make them. And I'll show you how this one will fit on here. And see, I don't like the little bump on this. I mean, I, I people keep them or don't. I'm probably going to end up cutting out that little V. But you can keep it on there or not. Uh, another friend of mine that I showed how to do this will you keep these edges and tape it down. I don't like to do that. I, like, I don't want my plate in it when I'm doing anything to it. So I want to throw it to the side, so I won't worry about that. But, like with this, if you want to keep that that little triangle in, if it feels more secure to you, I think I'm going to cut this one out. But when you cut it out, you have to make sure you're very precise cutting it out along these lines. So I'll try. You have to butt up against that and get it cut. Gonna take a few passes because this is where your plate's gonna you want your plate to lay flat all right there we go that's mostly through once it's mostly through i can go back with the scissors and do it easily i really think i might need Dig out my extra blades. I know I've got some. I've got so many art supplies here, it's frightening. But I've been doing art for over 30 years. I got my art degree, what, 25 years ago? I'll have to look it up and see. And I have worked at other jobs, of course, because I don't like... I don't like have, having to do art by on demand, you know, it just gets my goat. I don't want to do what you want me to do. I want to do what I want to do. Which I guess gets you nowhere in the art world, but commissions are not my thing. No matter what I did, whether it was jewelry or pottery or whatever, I hated anyone to say, could you make this for me like this and this and this? No, learn how to make it yourself if you've got an idea, but... Then it's yours and not mine. And I went through all this work. I don't care how much money you give me. It's yours and not mine. So, as you can see, same way we were just working. You can leave that V on there. I don't. But, you know, one of my objections, because a friend of mine leaves it. I showed her how to do this, and she likes to leave it because she thinks it's more secure. So she, when she does her pictures and to, to paint over, she will do it, cut it exactly the size of the gel plate, stick it to the gel plate, and put it over that. But I can feel that ridge when I'm working in it annoys me. So I have one that I did leave like that. But Okay, so this is how you do it. Um, I hope this video comes out so I don't have to do this again. I'm not good at these videos yet. I did take video in... Um, college 
but we had the big video cameras we had the tripods this is something so different using the phone and i've got my laptop over here where i can see but it just distracts me i don't think it helps i'm gonna have to figure out something else but anyways thank you for viewing this this is a very simple cheap everybody has a pizza box device to line up your paper it works every time to give you exactly the border you want if you cut your paper too now i have these right here cut to it but since i just showed you the other one as you can see you measure these because sometimes you didn't do what you thought you were going to do this is one exactly one and a half by exactly one and a half well yeah if you do it on the end so exactly one and a half so with this five by seven you just add for your paper this plate is five by seven this border is one and a half and i will write that on here as you can see on this one i write it on all of them so i know this says five by seven plate so the paper needs to be this so on this one for a five by seven plate seven plate you just add three so it's eight by ten is your paper so you put eight by ten paper and then for your other plates i mean this will work for all your plates if you think about it once you measure it out and you get the right size paper it doesn't matter which plate you put in here it can be a larger plate and it's still, if you get your paper cut right, it's still going to give you the right border. It can be the largest plate. I don't know what the largest plate I have, um, but I can still use this on it. I probably, if I was going to use the larger plate all day and do something precise, I'd probably make a bigger one for it. Just, I don't know why. But this will work on, well, angle it, right? As you can see, the border's the same all the way around it. So... Thank you for viewing this. Um, I really like doing these videos. See, I sit out here and talk to myself anyway, so I might as well be doing videos. Um, and there's one more way that I've got to do that is far more precise. So if you do precise kind of work, it will work for you. And I'll do another video on that probably next week. Thank you for viewing. Please give me a like and subscribe. And I will have a video coming up. My next one coming up is going to be ways to use your gel prints. I have a million of them. And I know you have a million of them. If you, you start a gel print and you've got a million gel prints. And uh, ways to use even the bad ones. And I'll show you uh, in the next video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.